I wish you a wonderful good morning. Nice to have you with us again. We have here in Munich blessed minus nine degree. <laughs> so if you are bold to go outside, uh, make sure that you keep on moving because if you stand still, you will stick to the ground <laughs> and freeze somewhere. So yes, let's pray to uh, not freeze this day. <laughs> thank you Holy Spirit for this wonderful morning. We thank you that we yeah, uh, are alive and that we uh, yeah, have your word have your presence. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have something on your heart for anybody that listens right now. I pray, Holy Spirit, enlighten us, strengthen us, make us bold as you want, as you want us to be. Amen. Maybe this morning you looked into the mirror and he told you more than you would like to hear. <laughs> Maybe he showed you more of truth than you liked, so you turned down a, a little bit the light. And sometimes the mirror T uh, tells us more than we like and so it's may maybe better to ask your pet because my dog he always tells me wonderful encouraging things every time I ask him how do I dress how do I look like today he always says wow <laughs> so he's very encouraging and uh, we need encouragement but do you know who you are do you know how you really look like we have an interesting story in the Bible in the fourth book of Moses, chapter 13, where we have the spies going through the country that God promised the people of Israel. So the people of Israel, they just moved out of uh, Egypt and now they are about to enter the, the promised land. And so they stand in that country and they say very interesting things. They say here in Numbers 13, verse 33, We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. I doubt they really asked. So how could they know how the others uh, thought about them? So here we see two different perspectives that we could have that both lead us not to victory but to destruction. We have the perspective we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. So how, what are your eyes seeing? Who do you think you are if you are looking through your own eyes? Your own eyes uh, determined by your own past, by the sum of all your failures and um, happy days Normally those eyes do see a lot of stuff. We should not see anymore and also they Thought so much about how they how the enemies looked and thought about them and That's also not a very good idea <laughs> To think much about how your enemies would think and feel about you because the enemy has one goal is it not you seeing happy and seeing victorious? No, it's you being defeated. So which thoughts does the enemy have? Um, thoughts of lies and of destruction. And that's a very, very bad idea. The, the more I fill myself and I fill my heart with the lies of the enemy, the more I will get sick of those lies. And no matter how, lo how loud the lies will speak, there still remain lies. It's still a lie. If it's small, uh, it talks uh, silently, if it talks loudly, it still is the same. It's a lie. And so often we do not really know who we are because we ask too much our own eyes, our own past, our own feelings, or even we ask the enemy what he thinks and feels about me. And so we end up <laughs> not being encouraged, no, one, no wonder what. And so it's so precious to better see ourselves through God's eyes. Because he created me, he even recreated it, reborn, has reborn me. <laughs> and so he really knows who I really am. And the spies, they laughed with the same laughter that the enemy laughed about them, they laughed about themselves. And it's so precious to have men of God and the Word of God they, who did not laugh about themselves. If we think about Goliath, 
that laughed about David mocked him. But David himself did not accept that mocking, did not accept that laughing about himself. He was not laughing about himself because he knew who he was. He knew he was not fighting his own fights, but the fights of God. He knew who he was and he knew uh, who God was. And oftentimes the lies in our hearts are so strong because we repeat over and over again what our eyes, own eyes or what the eyes of the enemy does see in our own lives. And it's so, so important to see that David did not allow the enemy to stop him. So the words of Goliath could not stop David. And even the words of his own king, he did not allow that they stopped him. The king who knew nothing about spiritual warfare, just about earthly war warfare. The words of his brothers, they um, that yeah, tried not to encourage him, but to tell him that it's not possible and that he's not with the right motive. And he was not allowing those words to stop him. Or even Jesus, he was not um, hearing to this, his brother's words that followed him a lot of time, but were not really believing in him. And also he was not stopped by the words of the people he grew up with in Nazareth. They said, oh no, he's, he's not right. It cannot be. He was believing what God, his father, said about him. That he is his um, beloved son in whom he is well pleased. And I like you to tell everybody about me because you show my character to the world. He believed and listened to the voice of the Father. And it's so important for us that we listen to the voice of the Father. And if I do not open my Bible every day, I do not know the voice of my Father. And I forgot, or even I never knew who I am. So if I stop reading my Bible every day, I tend to take the risk that I forgot who God is, I even forgot who I am. I just listen to the voice of the devil. I just listen to the voice of my own crooked past. And so I will not run well. I will not be successful and happy in life. And it's so interesting. Um, oftentimes in our daily lives, we have so many different confusing voices sometimes. And it's Sometimes it's easy to hear a message like that, to even to read the word. But then in our daily lives, in our situations, there are so many voices. And this week I realized that I did a big mistake. I'm a teacher and I am in the process of organizing a retreat for two classes. And I, right now I run the danger of having caused a damage of several thousand euros. And I, I, um, last week somebody twice was t uh, asking me about it and always showing really how astounded that person is. And I fa fa felt uh, um, being stressed by that. I did not like that person to talk about me too much about that. And afterwards I asked myself, or the Holy Spirit asked me maybe, Ben, why are you so stressed by that? And uh, yeah, the Holy Spirit showed me I give too much attention about what people think about me, about my failures. And normally those truths, they arise in our hearts normally when we have a crisis, when we um, did some mistakes, normally when everything's fine, the weather outside is w nice and warm, everything's fine. But if things are challenging, sometimes our heart <laughs> shows up. And I realized I give too much attention to what people think about me. And in the end, it's the hope that my worth will arise by people telling me nice things. But forget the, the, the belief that your, that your worth could change. It, nothing will change about my worth if people praise me or if people condemn me. That has nothing to do with the truth. But sometimes I... Um, find myself not living in truth, living in emotions that are nice, but the other day it's not nice and I feel horrible. 
but I lost truth. And that's not, not good. In the, in the evening, the Holy Spirit asked me another question. Are you bound by the fear of losing money? Is there love for money in your heart? Did you listen well last Sunday when pastor was talking about money? Did you grow in that aspect? In the end, it's even more, am I in fear of losing a battle, a personal battle? And so important is it that I know what the Bible says, who I am. Because the Bible says, I am victorious. The Bible also says, you are only victorious if you fight the right battles. Not your personal battles for your own benefit, but the battles of God. You are called to uh, fight in the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God, not your own kingdom. So if you fight for your own kingdom, you move into the flesh and all the fears and troubles and sorrows will come immediately. And that's a sign you're not fighting the right fight. And even though I might write that uh, uh, I take the risk of uh, having a damage of several thousand euros, God can still use that. So why should I live not with the peace of God, knowing that God can glorify himself through everything? And my sh focus should be much more on, not on my personal loss, but on the glory of God. And God, I know, will work it out all perfectly. But this situation show, showed me how quick we are to believe so many things that our emotions or people tell us or our past experiences tell us and not the truth that we find in the Word of God. And you can open with me in the end now to James chapter 1. One of my favorite verses that are so deep and I... Um, I think I have only um, yeah, understood a little part of that in James 1, chapter, uh, James 1, chapter 1, uh, verse 25. Uh, James talks about somebody who's listening, but he's not doing. He's not changed by the word of God. And so he lives the old lifestyle, but keeps on listening to the word of God and it does not really make sense and he compares it to somebody looking into the mirror goes away and he forgot who he was so there was a mistake there was something that the mirror told him that was not nice but he walks away and he did, does not change it and the interesting thing is we read here in James chapter 1 verse 25 but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and give, continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And it's so interesting because James compares the perfect law that gives freedom. It, he compares it to a mirror. So the Bible is my mirror, not showing me my 5,000 sin, sins I still have, but showing me in the first place who I, who I have become. In verse 18, James is talking about that new creation I have become. And now he says that that perfect law of freedom shows me who I have become. So if I stop reading my Bible every day, I run the risk not knowing who God is, but more even not knowing who I am. Just listening to some other voices telling me who I would be. And that is so precious. To read the Bible not as a law of condemnation, a law of what I have to do, which, with which I still struggle. No, it's a law of freedom. Freedom of what? Not freedom of uh, rules, but freedom of sin, of your sin nature that you have lost, that died with Jesus on the cross. You are free from your sin nature. Paul it describes it in Romans 6, 7, 8 so clearly that you are free from your sin nature. Not only by your past sins that God forgave. No, you are free from your sin nature. And why not starting to believe that? Why not having a great life and a happy life? Um, because James promises us he will be blessed in what he is doing. Not he, he will be blessed in when he relaxes, when he gets far away from daily life, no, in your daily life that is very challenging, packed full with uh, what you should do, in this you should be very happy, if you realized who you are. 
if you realize you are victorious, you can be victorious. And this is the great hope when I realized and I experienced God's power through me, knowing I can change, my heart can change. My past is not deciding my future, but the word of God and my ability to realize who I have become. And so wonderful is it if I realize who I have become. I am a brand new creation. Right, maybe in this morning you do not feel brand new, especially if you look under the temperature. But the Word of God says you have a brand new creation, filled with the power of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. And you are ready to serve. You are ready to love and to forgive immediately. If you think you sh are not ready to, you believe the, li the lies of your feelings or your past. Because the Word of God just told us. All the things that God asks from you, all the commandments of in, in the new covenant, what they ask of you is just a promise who you have become. Because the word of God says that it's a mirror telling you what you are able to do. Not what you're not able to do and you should do, but of what you are able to do. So if the Bible talks about, please love your neighbor as yourself, Love your neighbor as God loves you. Forgive your next as Christ forgives you. It's a description of what you are able to do. And why not reading the law of freedom every day? Not the law of, uh, of uh, anxiety, the law of um, condemnation every day. Too often we read the word of God as, as something that it is not. It's a mirror of who you have become and what is possible in your life. And it's so wonderful if we start this day with that perspective and motivation that I recognize I'm not reading God's word to get a blessing. I'm not reading to, uh, to just know God, but I'm also reading it to know who I am who I have become. And this is sometimes so new for us that we realize um, who we really are, that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we are precious and valuable in God's eyes. And it's a matter of do you know who you are? Have you looked into the mirror every morning so intently as we just read? And the Bible um, promises us, if I look into the mirror intently, in the law of freedom, I will change and I will be happy in the things I will do today. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your patience to teach us who you are, but also to realize who we have become. And I pray, Holy Spirit, give us a revelation about the new creation that lives inside of us, about the new thing you are doing right now, about that life you put inside of us that sometimes we so, so little of. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that this day is a day where we step out, to, out into our daily life bo with boldness, knowing who we have become, uh, being in the process of, of realizing more and more how much power lives inside of us, how much we have become new, and how much we are able to face every fight as victorious children of God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you guide us through this day and that you empower us. Amen. Amen.